A son is given, a son is given. For unto us a child is born, a son is given, a son is given. The Messiah, or to see him, to see him.
may be seated. Song says, Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful, and triumphant. You know, you might not have won at anything else in your life, but if you know Jesus Christ this morning, you've won. You're on top. Praise God for that. We're glad you came to worship with us during this Christmas season. Isn't it good to be singing some Christmas songs? Amen. Amen. Got a few announcements I want to make for you this morning real quickly. I want to remind you that the for the drama The Lone Manger, that's going to be performed on December 19th. That'll be our service for Sunday, December 19th. So uh, please put that on your calendar come out. There is a rehearsal today. You'll be meeting with Chastity here after lunch and rehearsing today. There's a rehearsal on December 12th, and then at 4.30 on December 17th before the presentation, so please keep that in mind. All right, it says here, if anyone has any wooden barrels or an old wagon that they can borrow for December 19th, bring it on. Let Mandy know, okay? So if you have an, any wooden barrels or an old wagon, please let them know that. There is a prayer vigil set for this Saturday, December 11th at 6, and it's going to be in the gym this time, okay? So you'll be meeting out in the gym for that. Um, next Sunday, we're going to be celebrating Nidra's 80th birthday. How about that? Now, that could change, but right now it's on, and I'll, I'll tell you why in just a minute. But it'll be during our dinner and, and lunch here in the fellowship hall, there's going to be cake and ice cream. It says face painting, balloons, and skits from the Peach Tree Clown Alley. So there'll be some clowns. Now, if some of you adults are afraid of clowns, you might want to eat somewhere else. <laughs> but if clowns are okay, we, we want you to come and join us and eat with us on that day, okay? Now, um, we're asking that everybody bring a birthday card, not any gifts or gift cards. And these are asked that we not bring any gifts or gift cards. But uh, she's trying to get 80 cards on her 80th birthday. That'd be neat if we could do that, wouldn't it? So bring a, a birthday card for Nidra next week if you would do that. And while we're on that, we're going to have a special prayer for Norman and Nidra right now. I'm going to ask if we'll bring uh, a couple of chairs over here. I'm going to get Wendell and TC to sit in for both of them. We're going to pray for Norman and Nidra. And let's send them over here to the side so we can get everybody around with the... the Norman uh, aspirated this morning, and uh, he's not doing real well. His esophagus, I understand, is thickening. He cannot breathe. He is now on a ventilator. Uh, they didn't have a room in ICU, and so they put him in the ER there, and he's on the ventilator, and the doctor has said it's not looking good. So we're going to pray this morning. And this is all in God's hands, right? We know it's all in God's hands. We're going to have a special prayer for Norman, but I think we also have to have a special prayer for Nitra. And so Wendell's sitting in for Norman, and TC's going to sit in for Nitra, okay? Father God, as we come to you this morning, Lord, we want to first of all praise you and thank you for being our God. And for being such a mighty God. And Lord, it, it just amazes me every time I think about it. Lord, you're God and I'm not. And you're good and I'm not. But God, you love me anyway. And Lord, you love Norman and Nidra. And we thank you for that. We pray first for Norman, Lord, that you would just reach down and touch him right now, Lord. I, she's asking, praying that, Lord, there be no suffering. Lord, I, I pray that prayer with her. Lord, we don't know what you have in store for Norman, Lord. We, we'd love to have him around a little bit longer. God, that's all in your hands right now, Lord. Uh, we yeah, know this yeah. is a tough time. Yeah. We know that he's struggling, and, and I just pray that you would let him know that you're right there with him right now. Lord, that you would just comfort him and just wrap your big arms around him and just love him. And I pray for Nidra right now, Lord, that you would uh, touch her. God, I, we know this is going to be tough on her. It always yeah. is. But God, you, you're with us through the tough times. You're with us through all times. And God, you have the strength she needs. You have the comfort she needs. And you have the peace of mind that she needs right now. And God, I know you want to give her those things, and I believe you already have. And I pray, God, that she would continue to feel that peace and that comfort, Lord, in her heart. 
And God, that you would be with her through this time. And Lord, whatever happens, Lord, help her to see you clearly. And help her to know that you're taking care of her, Lord. You haven't left her. And you're going to be right with her through all of this. And God, we're just going to leave both of them in your hands now. And we're going to trust you for what you're going to do for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So what do you need me to tell them? Uh, just, um, you need any help? Line. I mean, they can just go get it with me. Okay, all right. Have, uh, That's the 18th, and you're going to meet at 1. Uh, well, there in Gordon. Oh, no, it's at Irwin Town. Oh, in Irwin yeah, Town, okay. Be, um, just okay, I'll tell them to see you. Okay. I did need to let you know that we are going to have a float in the Irwinton Christmas Parade this year. It's going to be on the 18th, on the 18th, and uh, Justin and Chris are somewhat in charge of that, and so if you have any questions, if you want to help with that, that would be good. If you'll see Carissa, I think they're going to meet at 1 o'clock on that Saturday in Irwinton, and so if you want to help with that, just let them know, okay, and that would be a good thing. I'm going to ask you to stand at this time if you would. This will be a time of giving our tithes and offerings to the Lord. The blessing bowl's in the middle aisle right up front. So you come and give as the Lord leads this morning. <clears throat> we'll fellowship. Well, I can see that you weren't going to let me take the fellowship time away from you this morning, right? Some of you have already started, so let's take a few minutes of fellowship together, okay? Let somebody know you love them today. How about that?
I could have your attention, please, real quickly, if we can come back to our seats. Uh, we're going to ask that we get another chair up here right now, and uh, Donna's going to come sit in for Cheyenne. Is that right? Oh, Carissa's going to do it. I'm sorry. Uh, Cheyenne is having some complications this morning with a pregnancy, and we want to pray for her right now, okay? So Carissa's going to sit in for Cheyenne. Jeff, would you lead us in this prayer? Lord, we just come before you this morning just, just lifting you up and just praising your holy name. Knowing that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords and the creator of all things. And we just thank you. We thank you, Lord, that Cheyenne is uh, pregnant. And we just, uh, just praise you, Lord, for that. And we ask you, Lord, to just help her. And that child is within her. Lord, we just, uh, I know that Harry and Donna are just looking forward to little feet going around the house. Just uh, see them smiling. Know that uh, Cheyenne and her husband are also just looking so forward to that. Lord, you know what's going on better than any of us do. And we just ask you, Lord, for your touch to be there for your presence to be there, to, to give them peace, to help the doctors, the, whoever, if it just be your touch. Lord, we know you can do it. Lord, we just, we just trust you in all things. Help us, Lord, to know that we can, can depend on you and look to you for all things. Lord, we just ask you to accept our praise and accept our prayer, to hear our prayer. We praise you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm a storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? And when you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God. Mary, did you know? You never know what's going to hit you when you come to church.
seated. Amen. And children, you can go to Children's Church at this time. Praise the Lord. We get Larry a mic. Larry, what you say? While we're waiting on Larry to get the microphone this morning, I had that fall this morning to get y'all moving up front. Did y'all get that? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I were that good. <laughs> I will try not to repeat myself on anything because God has been so good to me. I just want to testify this morning. Those times that I was in such sin and got shot and cut up and God stepped in and saved my life and gave me a chance and he gave me a chance to testify for him. And I got weak on my sorrow. And I let myself didn't nobody do it. I let myself get led astray. And I found something out this week. This is as close as I've been at death's door. I knew it. When I left, they took me out of my house. I didn't think I was coming home. I was scared to go to the hospital. I was in some pain. But when I got to the emergency room, they got me in there. I wasn't scared, and I truly wasn't. I knew that I'd went astray, and I knew that I failed God. 
but God was still there, and I, he hadn't failed me. It was me. And I didn't. When they prayed for me, I prayed for myself. But God gave me something that everybody in here needs to understand. It doesn't matter where you're at, what condition you're in, or where he puts you. I got to pray for an older lady out loud that was across the curtain in the room for me that was having so much trouble. And I got to pray for her. And she thanked me for it. Thank Casey, Connie. That's the joy he gave. He, I, I think sometimes he, sent, he might have sent me there just to say that prayer for that lady. And they brought a little 15-year-old child in who would like some of us, not all of us, but I have it a lot of time, got to the point, well, I don't care if I don't see morning. It's my failing because I don't stay strong enough in Jesus Christ. But we'll get to that point. And I listened over there as that little girl squalled and cried. Why did you bring me back? Why did you bring me back? And I got to pray for her, and I got to pray for her family, and I asked God, please, please, fire that child long enough to let her know God. And she won't do it anymore. And even the nurse, y'all know I got the weirdest sense of humor God gave anybody. But, well, I, I ain't picked the whole time I was in the emergency room. They didn't think I, my chances were on the bottom end. They weren't nowhere near the top. But I still picked and cut up. And I got to witness the, the staff every time I got x-rayed, ER or wherever. Whoever did it go out and bring somebody in. Do you see that? Do you see that? They asked me, what are those? I said, they're bullets. That one's in your heart. I said, yes, ma'am. That's where it needed to be. That's where God put it. It was in my heart. Crack that shell. And when they asked me, how in the world are you still here? And I got to tell them, because God left me here. I let them know that God left me here for that. And I'm so, he, 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 he comes and takes me right here. It'll be the greatest time of my life. Well, I'm thankful that he left me here long enough to pray for somebody else. To pray for somebody else and be a witness. <laughs> and I truly testify. Connie, my daughter, basically tell you, I felt I did not want to go to the hospital. I got to the point where I couldn't even crawl on the floor. Never once, never once did I say I'm afraid or I'm scared because I knew if that's what God picked me for and it was my time, then I'd I just have to be ready. If he didn't hold all that against me and was still standing by my side, if that's the way he wanted to take me, I was fine with it. And now I mean that for every bit of my being. He did, and he will. There's no fear when that time comes, because I've been there more than once. This one was work. He will take that fear. He'll take his boy and give you confidence. And he'll give you a chance to share that with somebody else before you leave. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. The Bible tells us to be ready in season and out of season. I think that means sometimes when we're feeling good and sometimes when we're not. And God puts us in places where we can do that. Our job is just to be faithful, as Larry was talking about. Praise God for that. During the service, one Sunday morning, a pastor said and made this announcement. He said there will be a meeting of the board immediately after this Christmas service. 
And at the close of the service, the board members and leadership gathered back in the back of the church for the announced meeting, but they looked around and there was this guy there that they didn't know. He was a stranger among them. And so the pastor said, my friend, did you understand that this was a meeting of the board? And the man looked at him and said, yeah, and after that sermon, I'm about as bored as I can get. <laughs> well, if this sermon bores you this morning, just keep it to yourself. <laughs> Hopefully that won't happen. I want you to think with me this morning about what it would be like if there were no Christmas. That has a lot of implications, doesn't it? A lot of things to think about. In 2001, John Grisham came out with a book called Skipping Christmas. Later in 2004, there was a movie made based on that book called Christmas with the Cranks. Maybe that was an appropriate name for them, I don't know. But it was about a couple, Luther and Nora Crank, who got tired of all the commercialism and all the stress that came along with getting gifts and putting up decorations and doing all of those kinds of things. So they scheduled to go on a trip during Christmas. So they decided to skip that year putting up the lights. And you remember the big snowman, if you saw that movie and all of that, they decided no frosty on the roof and no gifts and no celebration. Well, if you remember the story in the neighborhood, that seemed to be a pretty big neighborhood for all that kind of decorating, and everybody put up a frosty, and everybody got ready for Christmas, so it ended up being that there was a lot of ill feelings toward the cranks in that neighborhood because they were not doing any of that. And so they had to end up in the end, they found out their daughter was coming home, so they began to rush around and began to decorate and try to put the frosty on the roof, and they even planned a party for their daughter and they even had to give up their trip. And they found out that no matter how hard they tried, they couldn't skip Christmas. Well, I hope we can't skip Christmas. I hope we can't get past all of this without remembering what we're doing here and what the reason is. But what if there were no Christmas? Now, at the end of this sermon, I'm just going to read the Christmas story out of Luke to you so that you hear it at least one time. You'll probably hear it more than that, and I hope you share it with your family during this Christmas time. It'd be a good time before you started opening gifts, wouldn't it? And put first things first. Wouldn't that be neat if we all did that? But we've gotten so caught up in this nation over this idea of separation of church and state. We've got really messed up with that, haven't we? Gotten really confused with that one. And it's been going on for quite a while. The problem is, it's leading us now, I believe, to remove the reason for the season, which is Jesus Christ. Uh, that word, the name Christ, is even being taken out. And I don't care what anybody says, Christmas was established for Jesus. We need to understand that. I'm going to say that again. Christmas was established for Jesus. Now, I don't have a problem with giving all the gifts because it's like if we're giving to others, we're giving to Christ. Isn't that what he said to do? So I'm fine with that. But if that's all we think about and all we do, we have missed Christmas. There is no Christmas, basically. And we ought to remember that. There have been actions in the past to put other things in place of Christ and Christmas and really, I think, to remove him from the celebration completely. Nativity scenes being put up in some places bring what now? Protest. Protest. We're putting up a nativity scene at Christmas time, which is the reason we have Christmas. A few years ago, there was a nativity scene erected right in Washington, D.C., and in the midst of that, there were protests from atheists all around. And so they came up with a compromise. And here was the compromise. They let them put up the nativity scene and leave it there, but they also let the atheists put up a sign right next to it. They didn't make them go somewhere else and do it. They put it right next to the nativity scene. Here's what the sign said. There is only our natural religion. Religion is but myth and superstition that hardens hearts and enslaves minds. So you got basically Christ and the devil right there battling, don't you? Isn't that the battle we face every day? And we're going to battle it this Christmas. You understand that, right? We're going to battle it again this Christmas. My question is, are we really going to fight it? 
Are we really going to battle it, at least within our families, to the point where we help them to understand what the reason is? I hope this is not the first year you do that. I hope you've been doing that every year when your families have gathered. Several years ago, there was a school in the Midwest that was sued for putting up Christmas decorations and not recognizing the Muslim holiday of Ramadan. The school sanctioned one, but didn't sanction the other. And schools and businesses everywhere are having to stop displaying decorations or anything that has anything to do with Christ in Christmas. It's going on everywhere now. It's one thing to allow people to celebrate whatever they want, but when we start removing Christ, we can celebrate everything else but not Jesus Christ. We're in a bad place. We have messed up big time. Most businesses and schools today are required to use the phrase Happy Holidays rather than Merry Christmas. I saw a decoration. Annel loves decorations. Y'all know that. And if you, come to our, if you don't believe that, just come to our house. You can come right now because it's ready. It's not fully decorated in her mind. It is in mine, but not in hers. So there will be more decorations going up. So if you want to see decorations, you come and do that. But we were, I was with her shopping the other day, and we were looking at some decorations, and on this particular decoration, it had happy holidays. And I looked at it, and I said, well, Aunt L, there's one we're not going to buy. I'm not going to be a part of that, okay? Now, I know it may sound all innocent saying happy holidays, and, you know, if the purpose weren't to take Christ out, maybe that'd be all right on occasion to say happy holidays. But we got to understand the purpose. I believe Satan is using that to remove Christ from all of that. How sad is that? I mean, come on now. This is the United States of America. We were founded on Christ and on Christian principles. How sad is all of that that we're moving him out? Well, it got to me thinking with thinking about that movie and all of that. Well, what if there really was no Christmas? What would that look like today if there were no Christmas? Well, some of the things that might come to our mind would be that we wouldn't have this time of year to look forward to. How many of you look forward to Christmas? Probably just most of us in here in some way or another look forward to Christmas. Well, as daylight gets shorter and the temperatures out there get colder, you know, they tell us it gets more depressing with people. And Christmas is one of those things that picks up the spirit of people. So that might be something we'd be missing during this winter time. There might be more people depressed. There'd be no winter family gathering, wouldn't it? And I don't know about you, with some of my family members who are off and away other places, Christmas and maybe Thanksgiving, sometimes Easter, may be the only times I see them. You know, Wouldn't it be sad if we were missing one of those times? That'd be sad. Think of all the joy and smile on the faces of children during this time I mean isn't it neat just to watch them when they get a present their eyes get big and they start grinning and they just start tearing it open or whatever they got to do to get to it there'd be no family holiday traditions I think families would be worse off without Christmas there'd be no Christmas carols like we I mean I enjoyed singing those songs this morning I hope you enjoyed listening and singing with us I enjoyed singing Christmas carols during this season there'd be no Christmas trees and this next one really breaks my heart there might not be any Claxton fruitcake <laughs> anybody know what I'm talking about I love that stuff there'd be no lights everything would be darker there'd be no Charlie Brown Christmas special yeah, I know you still watch it come on there'd be no Rudolph no Jimmy Stewart and It's a Wonderful Life? Come on, if the kids were in here, they might cry after this next one. There'd be no Christmas break from school. Just have to keep on going. I mean, look at all the special things we'd, we'd be missing, but those aren't the really important things. That's just kind of the surface stuff, isn't it? Without Jesus' birth and Christmas, and I've told you this before, there would be even less love in the world today. I, I believe that. How many of you know that on Christmas Day, I believe more love is shown on Christmas Day than any other day of the year? And I think that honors Christ because Jesus Christ is love. 
Jesus taught his followers and he teaches us to love others. And he teaches us to take care of each other. And I see more of that during Christmas than any other time of year. Think about some of the Christian organizations that were founded as charitable organizations. Organizations such as the Red Cross, the Salvation Army, World Relief, World Vision, Samaritan's Purse, which we helped with the gifts for the kids, Food for the Hungry and Compassion International. Those are just a few organizations that really, they work all year round, but they really get busy at Christmas. Much of the good in this world would be missing without Christmas. And I keep saying Christmas because I want to emphasize the name of Christ in Christmas. It's not just a holiday. All of that would be very sad, wouldn't it? But we haven't gotten to even the worst part yet. Without Christmas, listen to me now, Christ would not have been here. He would not have come. Because that's why we celebrate it. There would have been no Christ birthday to celebrate. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure I want to even consider all the consequences of that. I mean, that's even awful just to think about. Think about what Jesus did for a minute. In John 1, 1 through 5, the Bible says this. Listen to it. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was God in the beginning. We talked about that in Sunday school this morning. Try to wrap your head around the fact that there was no beginning for God. You know, we, we know there's a beginning for us when we're born, right? And there's an end on this earth for us when we die, but thankfully there's not an eternal end for us. And that's because of God. It says, through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. Without him. In him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. He shines it for everybody. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. It seems to me if there were no Christmas and Christ did not come, there would be no light in this world. Think about it, the creator of everything, the one who has been since the beginning of time and even before, the one who everything was made for and nothing was made without him being there, the light of the world. Almighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, just to name a few of the things that he is. He chose to become a fragile little baby that I could have held in my hands right here before you this morning. Could you imagine Mary and Joseph holding the light of the world, the creator of the universe, Almighty God? I mean, that must have been something. And then he chose not only to be that fragile baby, but he chose to live as a man just like you and I with everything that goes with it, all the pain, suffering, everything else that goes with it. Well, why would he do such a thing? Why would Almighty God do such a thing? What could possibly be his motive for wanting to do that? I mean, come on now. How many of us, if we were already in heaven, would want to come back here and do something like that, huh? To go through the ridicule and pain that he knew he was going to suffer on the cross. And even before the cross, didn't he? Knowing he would be rejected by his own family and people. People for whom he would later die. Knowing he would be placed in a cold, dark tomb. We don't even want to think about that stuff, do we? We don't want to even think about that possibility. Why? Why? Well, I think John 3, 16 gives us the clearest answer. You know it. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. That's why he did it. Because of what? Because of his great love for us. Never forget, never forget how much God loves you. Now, I know that's something you've heard all your life. But sometimes we don't remember it. We let other stuff get in the way and we forget how much God really loves us. Well, just think about all that he did for you and that ought to help you with that. It was simply his great 
in pure love that caused Jesus to come like a helpless little baby and to live in this body for a time. I mean, a man of all eternity confined himself for t in time in this body here on this earth with us. You know, we can think about that, I think, all day long. I can tell you some more about it. And I still don't think we'll fully grasp how much Jesus Christ loves every one of us. I don't think we'll ever truly fully get it. He had to do it because of that love, because we couldn't do it for ourselves. You know, Larry talked a little bit about his unfaithfulness, but God's faithfulness. That's the difference between us and God. His faithfulness versus our unfaithfulness. Thank God for that. Listen to what Paul said in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 through 19. He said this, For this reason I kneel before the Father. Sometime during this Christmas holiday, you ought to kneel before God. You ought to be doing it every day anyway. But if you haven't been doing it, sometime this Christmas you need to kneel before Almighty God, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. We come from Him. I pray that out of His glorious riches He may strengthen you with power through His Spirit in your inner being. You know, we talked, we preached recently about the power of God. Think about God's power in your life, what he's done for you. That's what Larry was talking about this morning, what God had done for him, his power. I pray that out of his glorious riches, hear it again, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in what? In love. That's why you need to remember God's love. That's why you need to think about God's love and read about God's love in the Bible so you can be rooted and established in his love because there's nothing else that's going to root you and establish you and cause you to be faithful and obedient to him. It's through his love. May have power together with all the Lord's holy people. Did you get that? That's why we come here. Did you realize we come here to have power together? Huh? To grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. I mean, that sounds like to me it covers everywhere. It covers everywhere. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge. Come on now. We got some folks in this world today that think they're smart. They think they know what's going on. They think they got it all together and they ain't got a clue. You know what the Bible calls them? Just pure out dumb sheep. And they're without a shepherd. That's what Christ said. They need a shepherd. They need somebody to get in here and give them some smarts. And that's through his love that that happens. It's through his love that that happens. That you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now, if it weren't possible for you to be filled with a measure of all the fullness of God, he wouldn't have just said that it, you may have that. And that's what he just said. But we're not going to get it without seeking him. We're not going to get it this Christmas without remembering Christ's birth and putting that at the forefront and at the top. Now, i got to admit it makes me happy to see the faces of my children and grandchildren when they open presents. How many of you with me on that, older folks? Amen. I mean, the joy and the excitement is just un it's unbelievable when they get going. Some of them, it looks like they get so excited they can't hardly control themselves. You know what I'm talking about? They just get out of control going, you know, wild doing that stuff. The anticipation, I must admit, I get pleasure out of watching that. I just get pleasure out of that. It makes me feel good, too, to give them those gifts. I, I love giving them gifts. Let me ask you something. How do you think it makes God feel when someone on this earth opens up the gift that he's given them and accepts it. Huh? And the joy that he knows he is giving them and bringing to them. How does it make you feel when you're in the presence of someone who opens up the gift of salvation and you watch it and you see it? Isn't that one of the neatest things in the world? If you have never done that, get busy, folks. They're out there. They'll come to the Lord. Get busy. If you've never seen that, you've missed it. 
Let me ask you another question. Were you excited when God came into your heart? I don't mean you were necessarily grinning and laughing. Some folks cry. Tears of joy, that's pretty good, isn't it? But what did you feel inside? What happened inside of you when he came in? Let me ask you another question. Do you think one of my grandchildren or children would pick up a present and then just look at it and never open it? Huh? That's the way people are doing every day. There are people every day being confronted with the gift of salvation and they're just looking at it and some of them are not even staying with it long enough to even open it. They're turning away. They're turning away. What an awful thing to think about. There's far too many people who are rejecting that gift today. Folks, we need to be telling them. You see, that gift is for everyone. It's for anyone who will open their heart to Christ. And allow him to come in. And he wants everyone to do that. 1 Timothy 2 4 says this God wants all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth. That's God's heart, that's God's desire. Listen, December the 25th is coming soon. <laughs> it's going to be here and it's going to be gone before we know it. We're going to celebrate. And then it's going to be over with. We've spent a lot of time decorating, shopping, cooking, and on and on it goes, right? All the packages we've shopped for, they're going to be torn open in a matter of just like that. That's the way mine do it anyway. It won't take them long to do it. Then the time for opening gifts will come and gone. Family time will be gone. And then what's left? Cleaning up. And then that time's going to be gone too. It'll be gone. Christmas, to me, is a joyous and a fun time. I just love it. I love everything about it. But there's got to be more than what we've been talking about. Tr truth is, we've got to be thinking about Jesus. We've got to have Christ on our minds during Christmas. Each Christmas we celebrate here on earth, I believe it's building to a final climax. And as these Christmases pass, that final climax is getting closer and closer and closer. If you're a Christian, it's a climax that will never disappoint you. <laughs> it's going to be a great thing. If you don't know Jesus, it's going to be a terrible terrible day terrible Christians will be with Jesus for all eternity in heaven I can't give you any better promise than that from God it doesn't matter who tries to remove his name or the nativity scene from Christmas Christmas will always belong to Christ whether folks see it or not it will all be about him and I want to make it about him this morning by reading to you the Christmas story from the book of Luke. You're very familiar with it, beginning in verse 1 through about verse 14. We're just going to read down through the story, and then I'm going to close. But I want to put this story in your hearts and minds. I think some of you may almost know it by heart. Maybe some of you do. It's a familiar story. We read it every year. We read it more than once every year. I'm going to teach a lesson on it in Sunday school coming up soon. And that's the way it ought to be. Verse 1, In those days Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. I wonder how come it happened to be at this particular time. Duh. <laughs> and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone all around them, and they were terrified. 
But the angel said to them, a familiar theme in scripture, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Wouldn't you love to have been there and heard that? My, what singing that was. You know, we ought to sing like that here on Sunday morning. Glory to God in the highest. <laughs> we ought to sing it out. Most of us usually give some good gifts to our children. I know that. We cannot come close to giving the gift that God has offered to every one of us this morning cannot come close and he'll give it to anyone who will come to him in Luke eleven thirteen, 13 Jesus said this to his disciples if you then though you are evil his disciples though you are evil know how to give good gifts to your children evil people give good gifts how much more will your father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him because God is good and not evil he's going to give a whole lot more and a whole lot better. There is no greater gift than could be given to us than God to put his spirit in us when we come to him and confess our sin and believe in him. We've been teaching you just recently in a few sermons on the Holy Spirit and what he does for you. I have a question for you this morning. Do you have the spirit in your heart? Have you been saved? Do you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? Are you living a life that is completely yielded to him if his spirit is in you? Uh-oh. Started meddling, didn't I? I'm going to say it again. If you've accepted the Holy Spirit in your heart and life, are you living a life that is completely yielded to him, the Almighty God? Are you led by his spirit? Do you allow his spirit to guide you, to teach you, and to get you in the right place, and to keep you there. If you can answer all of those questions with a yes, then you've been described in Romans 8, 14 with these words. Here it is. It, this is you if you've done that. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. There it is. That's real simple. We can all understand that, can't we? Christmas 2021 is going to soon be over. But his gift of love will never end. It will continue on and on if you know him and his spirit is in you. If his spirit is not in you this morning and you don't know him, I'm asking you, I am begging you. If it would help for me to bring a baseball bat out there to you, I'd do that. I am begging you to come to him this morning because you can't make another decision that's going to affect you as much as this decision is going to affect you. This altar is open. If you need the Lord Jesus Christ this morning, that's the specific invitation. I want you to come and let us pray with you. We've got some other Christians here that will come and pray with you and lead you into this relationship with Christ. Would you stand? This altar is open if you need to come. If you do come and accept him this morning, I promise you one thing, you'll have the best Christmas you've ever had in your life. You'll understand what we've been talking about.